What up, brothers? We're taking a detour outside today of the shop, but not very far, it's just in the parking lot. <laughs> but, uh, so if you guys know some of the Subaru that I bought a while ago, I only did two videos on it, but you subscribers should know what I'm talking about. And this car has been a rebuilt title, and what I can't, you know, it just has a lot of rust, as you saw in the video, has a lot of issues with it that I don't want to, well, just because the body's so rusty, even fixing the issues, I feel like it still won't be what I really want. So what I ended up doing is finding this parts car for pretty cheap. Apparently it has a JDM engine in it, but it won't start. But by the looks of it, it looks like a lot of things have been swapped over, if you guys know anything about it. Um, there's no oil cooler on a JDM engine, um, and there's no water outlet on the water pump to go to the cooler. But it has both of those on this. It also has, well they're talking about the crank sensor, not mating with the the crank the the sprocket itself because it doesn't have the same teeth on it but the computer seeing that it's rotating it's seeing the rpms in the engine so i'm thinking that it might have been swapped over and i'm not really sure why it's not starting so i'm going to run through a couple tests here and show you a little diagnostics to see how to diagnose a no start issue if in fact it is something going on with the engine as far as because it's jdm versus usd or if it's just something that somebody overlooks and it might be uh, in my luck here, we'll see. All right, so here I am in the scanner as far as the data. So the engine speed, the first one there, that's my crank signal sensing it. And when I crank the car, you can see that it's seeing the ro rotation. And the fact that it's seeing that, it's making me think that that sprocket is correct because it seems that that's about the speed that it's running it may be a little faster, but maybe there's something I'm missing because this I'm new to this. I've never messed with a JDM USD stuff as far as swapping. So I'm definitely learning as I go here. So you guys could learn with me. I don't know if it should read it all or if it's supposed to read some. Even though that it is cranking, I figure that it should be throwing a spark regardless. Like I said, maybe just not at the right time. Now it's making me think there might be something wrong with the coil circuit. So I think that's where I'm going to go next to start checking fuses for the coils. Okay, so here's my little test plug that I have. The way that this thing works is obviously you plug it in like a regular spark plug, but then you clamp this to a ground. A lot of times what I do, just to make sure they have a positive ground, is use a jumper wire on it to go to either the battery or just any kind of solid ground that I know is a good ground to make sure that I have that. And basically you just start cranking the car over and then inside of here, the spark will jump to the outer edge of this to show you that it is the coil is in fact arcing and you're actually getting spark provided now what i'm thinking is if it's jdm and it's the crank scissors incorrect it shouldn't be throwing a spark or it may be at the wrong time if it's at the wrong time that's going to be difficult to tell because you know as long as it's firing it's not telling me where it's firing i don't know where the pistons are in relation to when it should be firing but uh at least gets me closer to knowing the details here you know, funny, I decided to start playing with some of these hoses over here. Just uh, looking at it and see what else was going on and uh, notice a little bit of corrosion. Check it out. One of the PCV lines, hoses was actually zip tied in there together. And then I pulled up on this little one and oh boy, look at that, it broke. Right down in the, in the hose there. So not a huge deal, but if this is wide open, that's a huge intake leak and it ain't gonna run right if at all because of that intake leak so you know what i'm gonna plug that and try and crank it all right got my plug in there for my box of plugs uh, but let's be honest guys i'm really not expecting this thing to start but it's just good practice that if you see something like that at least try it just because you never know what you're gonna get let's hope for the best oh still nothing Shit, it almost sounded like I wanted to start there. Let's pump it a few times like a carburetor. <laughs> Nada. Hey, worth a shot. All right, I finally got this thing off. Definitely has a tight squeeze in there, as you guys know. It's a 12 millimeter taking the coil off, and I had to use, well, the little ratchet with the shorty, but I had to break it loose with that 
because it was pretty tight, but then wheeled it off the rest of it with that. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my test plug, slide it in like so. I'll need two hands for this. All right, so I got it in there wired, got it moved away from any moving parts and have it going straight to the ground on the battery just to make sure that I don't have any issues with that. And now, usually I can see, usually I can get this plug high enough so that I can visually watch it snap, but uh, sometimes you can't. So basically I just gotta be outside the car and listen to hear if I hear the spark plug snapping. It's pretty loud on this. You may not be able to hear it in the camera. Well, I'll put it up here actually so you can and visualize it so I can watch it too. <laughs> and then, uh, see if this thing's actually arcing like we want. So as you saw, the spark plug is not firing. That could be a number of things, being that this is a JDM in a USD car, the sprocket may not have gotten changed. Now I know I said earlier that the it's reading the revolutions, but that may not be communicating correctly with the rest of the car and so therefore I'm not getting spark. Because as you heard, you can hear the fuel pump running, so it's not an issue with that. And the air is not clogged by, at least from what I know. So the only thing we have that's causing our no start issue is the fact that our spark plugs are not firing off. So now we gotta dig in a little deeper and figure out what's going on with that. All right, so on the WRXs, the fuse panel, you have one in the engine bay, but the second one is behind here. What you do is you pull this down and then pull it up towards you and then it has a little slot on the side for this to slide out and then you kind of wiggle it out like that um, and then you have the display here that shows you where all the fuses are on this particular one number 11 slot which is right here it's the one I'm looking for fuse is good as you can see the is not compromised so now the next thing to do is to check to see, make sure we have our actual 12 volt source in this circuit. So I need a test light for this one. The way, test lights are super easy. You basically hook them up to the ground on the battery and then you can test for hots. And if you need to do the opposite, you hook it up to the positive to test for grounds. Since we're looking for the 12 volt source on this circuit, we're hooking it up to the negative. I'm using the same jumper wire I was before to hook up to my test light because it's not long enough. So here we are, in the bay, turn the ignition on as soon as I put the key in it, yeah. So the ignition is on and I'm gonna probe. And there we go, test light is lighting up. So we have our 12 volt source. So now the next thing to do is to check it right at the coil itself to make sure there's power actually going to the coils. Okay, so now with a coil plug, I'm gonna use the same one I was using earlier. They have three wires. One's gonna be your hot, one's gonna be your ground, and then you have the trigger. So we know we don't have our trigger getting sent, well, maybe we do, but um, point being, is I'm gonna be just making sure that there's hot and ground both at it. Because it could have the hot, but if it doesn't have a good ground, then it's still not gonna fire as well. So we have to make sure that both are there. So first, right now I have the, this thing still hooked up to the negative. And let me get a tripod so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure which wires are which. Uh, I'm assuming the red and gray, or whatever color that is, red and white, is gonna be our hot. So I'm gonna probe that right now. The ignition is on, by the way. Okay, so you see the test light is lighting, so that means we do have our hot. So now I'm gonna switch the test light to the positive side so that I can test for ground. Now I'm gonna probe what looks like a black and or a gray and brown, and there's our ground there. So that means this last wire on the end here, if you can't tell, I'm probing the, the middle one is the ground there. And then the end one here is gonna be our trigger. Okay, so at this point, because we have both hot and ground on our coil plug, the next thing to do to check the trigger is with a scope. Now I know a lot of you guys probably don't have a scope, and my main idea here is to show you guys the things that are simple here, but uh, especially because this is JDM and USD mixture, the next step I'm gonna take here is actually take off the front cover and look at those sprockets to see if they are the correct ones because like I said, I don't really know a lot on this and 
don't know if it would still show a crank signal with the wrong sprockets being on there. So I'm just gonna take those off, make sure they're the right ones. And if they are the right ones, then we definitely have something else going on. The guy that I bought it off of says that it was the ECU that needed to be replaced, but I really can't trust that just because uh, the whole situation and how it is. Um, so that's the next step. Um, so I'll show you guys on the next video, me pulling the front cover, showing you how to pull the front cover, and then the whole what the sprocket difference looks like if we do have a different sprocket and go from there, right? But anyway, hope you guys like this. Comment, ask me any questions if you got them, and I'll catch you on the next one. Later.